Hey, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make your photographs really, really bounce and stand out amongst the rest. And it's so simple. So stick around. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video here at Better Media. My name is Nathan and it's an absolute pleasure to see all of you here today. Now before we get started, I use the hashtag over on Instagram, BMPix2020. And if you'd like the opportunity to see your photographs featured on this channel, then consider using the hashtag and I will shout you guys out as and when I review the hashtag. So yeah, let's get on to this video. There is a fantastic technique which I think is called Shindarin where you take a black and white photograph, but you choose a particular color that you want to stand out, say red, blue, green, whatever color you would like. It is basically a nice little way of turning a red bus or a phone box or an item of clothing and just having it sort of the color leak out while the rest of the image is black and white. Now this isn't something new. There is a many, many ways within Photoshop that you can in fact do this. And it's probably better to do it via Photoshop, but if Photoshop itself makes you feel just a little bit sort of like, oh my God, because there are so many tools and techniques to do this. I'm gonna show you a simpler way that you can just use the controls within Lightroom to do the same effect. And you can end up with some photographs a little bit like this. really splits opinion. Some photographers like doing it, some photographers don't, and some people like the photographs and some people don't. So don't feel bad if you don't get as much sort of likes with this particular effect. Like it's literally down to people's personal preference. But the effect itself can be quite difficult within Photoshop. But I have recently found a way that you can do it within Lightroom, which is so much simpler, so much easier. Again, the effect isn't as good has taken the time and efforts on Photoshop, but the outcome still looks really, really good. So we're gonna quickly go over a photograph which I've taken of Phoenix, wearing a nice red jacket, and I just want her jacket to stand out with everything else around being black and white. So let's jump into the laptop and I will show you how to make a selective color photo. Okay, so this is the photograph we're gonna use and I just want her jacket to sort of stand out a little bit. I want everything else to be black and white. Now, before we're gonna do anything else with any of these other sliders, we're just gonna go into the HSL slider. We're gonna go into saturation and we're gonna bring it all down. So every single one of them down to zero. As you can already see that the photograph turns pretty much black and white straight away. Just like that. So when they're all down, you have a black and white photograph. Yeah, it's a little bit blown out. That's because we've not done anything with the basic sliders yet. And we just want her coat to stand out. So to find out which sliders actually affect the coat, there's a nice simple way. You go into this little target up here. You get this little cursor and click and drag up on that particular part of the image. And you'll see over there on your sliders that the red and oranges start to come out. Okay. So as we know, the coat is red, so we don't really want the orange. So we're gonna bring the orange back all the way down. And there we go. So we've got the coat standing out, but the background itself is still black and white. And as you can see, the head and the hands have a little bit of color in it. And we're gonna show you how you can sort of make them black and white in a second. But if we quickly go over to Luminance as well, and we take the red slide out and we come down a little bit, we make it pop just that little bit more as well. So then we're gonna go down like that, bring the saturation up a little bit more. So there we go. We're not gonna go too much with it, we're just gonna play with it slightly, so we don't want that up too much. Now, as you can see around the edges, just here where the light hits the coat, you've got that little bit of sort of peaking. Don't worry about that for now. I'll show you how to fix that in a second. But at the moment, that is quite nice. So now I'm gonna show you how we can get rid of the color from the face and the hair. So we're gonna click off that, and we're gonna go into the brush, and then what we want to do is that we're going to slowly and start painting out the color in her face. So we're going to zoom in by control plus. I'm going to come into her face just like this. 
And quite simply, hit the brush tool, and then you want to come to the drop down menu and you want saturation. Now, if you come all the way down, you will see that saturation is minus 100, and you don't want any feather on your brush, and the size of your brush doesn't matter, it depends on what you're brushing out, and you can change it as and when you want. And then if we just simply start painting a mask around the hair and the face, you will see, turn the awesome mask off, you will see that it starts to go black and white. It's, there we go. So around the hair, across the face, just like that. There we are. We're gonna come into the hands now, bring the brush down by hitting the bracket keys. Now, if you do go over slightly, say I've just done that, I've hit a bit of the coat, and obviously I want the coat to still be red. So don't worry about it too much, So I will show you how you can fix that in a second. Now to clean up these mistakes, if you come to the erase tool, or the erase brush, now you can just paint over the bit and you're erasing and deleting the part of the mask that went over that little bit there. We're only singling out the hands, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna go into fit, we're just gonna do the top part of the head as well. And if you have a little look around here as well, you can see that so there's some of the leaves, because it was an autumn shoot, you know, some of the leaves are red, so you just wanna paint around the leaves and anything else that sort of had some red in it, and you just want to get rid of that. Like that, some up there, some at the back, around the sides here as well, there we go. Perfect. So now you have an entire black and white photograph, but only the coat is showing off red. But like I said before, you do have these sort of like little, sort of where it peaks, where the lights actually hit the coat, and you don't want that, you want it to be a little bit more perfect. So, if you come up to the top, you want a new brush, go down to the drop down menu, and hit the temp, okay? And you want it around about 24. And again, with the brush, you come down here and you hit the auto mask. Now what that is doing is that when you start painting on the coat, what Lightroom is now doing, it is recognizing the pixels from the red coat to the black and white images and only putting a mask on the red part of it. It's recognizing the difference between the two and you want to just go over the entire coat because you want it to be even. And as you can see, it's not affecting the face or the hair whatsoever. So it's not affecting any of that because I've only asked Lightroom to concentrate on the coat. And then what you want to do is go up to the temperature again and play around the slider until they sort of all disappear like that. So go quite high and there we are. It's vanished from the side now. And to bring a little bit more texture into the coat, you can come here and start playing with the, the settings, the basic settings, highlights down, bring the shadows up a little bit, and that way it starts bringing some texture back into the coat. So now you, you have that nice effect. And then all you can do is go up to here, take away the brush, go to the top of basic settings, and then you can play around the sliders to make the picture bounce a little bit more. Hit the auto, have a little bit of think, and there we go, straight away, the auto settings have brought the black and white pictures up a little bit and you end up with a half decent picture just like this. And it's as simple as that. Yes, like I said before, you can get a better result if you use a Photoshop technique but if you're not that good at Photoshop and it still sort of overwhelms you a little bit, this is a great way of coming up with some really, really cool ideas of just having one particular color stand out inside your photographs. And yeah, that is, that is pretty much it. I don't think there's much more to tell you in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have in fact enjoyed this video, please hit the like button just down there. It really does help out the channel. And please leave a comment if you've got any questions, quotes or queries. But until next time guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you next time. But as always, I've been Nathan, you've been sensational. Thank you and goodbye. Mwah, 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 mwah.